Okay, recording started. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the November edition of the Uni Community Hours. Uh, my name is Raúl. I am the one of the release engineers for Uni, and uh, which is the upstream product for the enterprise product Suse Manager. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to to be presenting today the these Uni Community Hours. So the agenda for today, first of all, I will tell you a little bit about the next Uni release. Uh, some remarks about it, and then we are having three presentations uh, about different topics. One of them from uh, our colleague Bo uh, about bulk SUSE Linux Enterprise Service, Server Service Pack Migration Workflow Engine. Then Julio and myself will be presenting something that we were doing during our Hack Week, uh, adding new distributions to SUSE Manager. Uh, sorry, uh, to Uyuni. And last but not least, Ricardo will be presenting his uh, Hackwick project about converting enterprise Linux clones to SUSE Liberty Linux with SUSE Manager, or in this case, uh, Uni. So without further ado, we will be starting. But first of all, I want to give a give welcome to Perugia, where my colleague Marina is uh, uh, teaching at Hello. universities on uh, classes about uh, open source. Marina? It's a pleasure to be oh. here. Thanks a lot for having us. Okay, so very nice to see you. Uh, feel free to interrupt us if uh, you have any questions. Uh, so, or you can also use the chat with Marina. Uh, yeah, so glad to have uh, more new faces. So let's start. Uh, before the first topic, I would also uh, like to share some uh, small announcement. The next Uni Community Hours, uh, the last Friday of uh, December would be on the 29th. Um, maybe some people would be on vacation because of Christmas for the people who celebrate that. Uh, so I moved then to the 22nd uh, to avoid these uh, possible holidays. But as usual, you will get announcements and notifications about this, so don't worry. And okay, now the first topic is Uyuni 2023.11 and or 2023.12, what's new? So uh, I have written two possible names because it is not very clear whether we will be releasing .11 but in worst case scenario, it, there will be a .12 uh, version. Um, so um, yes, you will have a new version very, very soon. And I cannot tell very much a lot about what will be coming there, but I can advance that there is support for two new distributions, which are Slim Micro 5.5 .5 and OpenSUSE Lib Micro 5.5. .5. Okay, Julio, something to mention? Yeah, to that I can already announce that we finally merged the pull request for Amazon Linux, Linux 2023 that I will be presenting later. So that should be part of the next universe as well. Okay, thanks for the remark. And next point is already one of our contributors um, presentation. Um, Bo will talk to us about this Bulk SUSE Linux Enterprise Service Server Service Pack Migration Workflow Engine. So, sure. Bo, the state is yours. Yeah, thank you. So, welcome everybody. Um, right. Uh, so, I prepared a presentation uh, using Lucy chart, and I will start the presentation now. So, okay. So, uh, it's about this uh, tool named. Uh, job checker. So I developed a tool job checker based um, uh, in one of the project uh, with one of my customer. So this customer is using about 2000 SLES and SLES for SAP systems and the Linux team must uh, patch the environments regularly. Uh, so they have a development test prod 
uh, development uh, environments, and we need to patch them regularly. And also, uh, uh, we need to do a service pick migration for the systems. In order to do that in SUSE Manager, by default, um, you can only do one by one systems. And so, like this screenshot. Uh, shows we have a bunch of systems. Each system has different channels, different less product, different add-ons, uh, and we need also to patch the existing uh, version first before we can move on to the next service pack migration, right? So you know that otherwise the tool will tell you you are not allowed to 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 migrate yet because you have too many outstanding updates. So all this stuff should be automated. So I created, I developed a tool called uh, Job Checker because initially the name Job Checker came from the idea just to loop through the jobs and 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 uh, check the status of the jobs. But uh, over the time, I added more and more functions, features, and at the, at the current version, it is almost like a workflow engine. So how does it look like? Uh, the job checker is uh, uh, developed in the language Golang, and the Golang is a compiled um, language, and it is a binary called job checker or job monitor. And this one single binary is running uh, in a normal case on the same host as SUSE Manager and Saltmaster, and it talks uh, to XML RPC API of SUSE Manager over the port 443 by default, and uh, it uses uh, Tornado REST API from Salt uh, on the Salt master node, and the port of course can be configured based on configuration. And the job checker on the other side is um, uh, receiving or can be called uh, also HTTP GET and POST request over uh, a port, and it uh, sends uh, over the local uh, configured SMTT daemon, mostly uh, postfix to send out emails to inform uh, admins about the uh, ongoing uh, workflow tasks. And it uses, uh, here you cannot read it, but it here is a, a SQLite DB database. So it's not only one DB file, it can be multiples depending how many ad, uh, administrators are using at the same time the job checker. So if you are one person A and you are just uh, currently working on some groups of SUSE manager to patch a bunch of systems, then you can have your own database file. Okay, and then the front of the interfaces. So, so how the admins are interacting with all this stuff, SUSE manager, sold and job checker. So they can of course use uh, the um, default way SUSE Manager web interface to do some manual interventions in case of failures. They can use salt run modules and curl modules to interact with job checker. So I also wrote some salt runner modules to better interact with job checker, uh, but can everything um, uh, can also be uh, used with curl. And then there is a one quite big configuration YAML file to work um, the admins should put the data in there, what uh, the job checker needs in order to to do the decisions how to move on with the systems. Then we have logs and then we have the emails for mainly for 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 information. Everything is open source on GitHub. Um, yeah. So the the main stuff is actually the config YAML. Yeah, the config YAML is quite large. The essentials part is, of course, you have to. Uh, so the the whole tool works with SUSE Manager Group. So I expect people use SUSE Manager Group and they put the minions or systems into the group, and in the configuration YAML file here, you just list uh, all your, the groups you want to target. Uh, you want to send to the workflow. Yeah, I don't want to go through all this in details. Yeah, but you can see here I'm talking about uh, here. You can specify some uh, the database files. Uh, you can set the log level. You can set timeouts. You can set uh, the ports talking to the Tornado APIs and so on. And we also have here a bunch of sold um, stuff so in this particular customer environment they want to also have some kind of disqualification check so that 
Does the target system have enough root disk space, especially ButterFS? Uh, if if this grains value is OK, so like ButterFS colon for patching, is the value OK? Then this uh, qualified, otherwise disqualified. And the same like uh, some systems could have grains value no patch, which means uh, these uh, specific systems are just uh, 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 should be excluded and not touched. And we also allowed the uh, predefined uh, pre patch and post patch salt states that can be run. And all this will be uh, um, read from job checker, and the job checker is interacting with salt to just do the salt activities. Yeah. And it goes on like uh, so the workflow part here is assign the channels. From assigning channels until updates, reboot, package refresh, until service pack migration. So everything this can be done here. And also, of course, I don't want to go too much details into these configurations. Everything is already described on the GitHub on in the readmes. Uh, you can specify the products, channels, identity numbers. Uh, which are needed in order to find the match uh, to which version I exactly want to uh, 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 migrate the systems in the groups. Yeah. So for example, if a system is on the service spec 3 and it can be upgraded to SP4, but also SP5. So here you have the, you can uh, very clearly define to which exact SP service spec you want to migrate to. Yeah. In just in case if one has multiple migration targets. And also I consider about uh, optional channels. So the old optional channel, new optional channels can be here defined. So if they match, they will be considered and assigned to the minions as well. Yeah. And in order to find the service pack migration ident information for the API, I also wrote a, a, a salt runner module to find and it will this command get SP migration list target groups SP migration underscore test will uh, go a uh, target all the systems in the group and find the unique ident number and uh, base product names and print it out so that admins can use it for, as input for the SP migration YAML file. And to start the service spec migration workflow, uh, also use a, a runner module for me, start migration.run and just give as input parameter the, the, the YAML file of each admin. And during the workflow runs, you can watch the logs. The logs are um, written using in Golang, the library uh, log rules. Uh, log rules. Uh, in JSON format, because I think that can be useful, helpful for uh, 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 aggregating the logs to Splunk uh, and other logging tools. And of course, they, 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 the admins receive emails in this particular case, a case for Disco One customer with 2000 less. So they will get uh, uh, periodically and, and configurable email interval. Uh, so yeah, the, the systems, if they are online in the remarks column, you will see if they if any of the system uh, has been disqualified because of ButterFS disk space not fulfilled or uh, no exception and so on. And then it shows at which stage, on which stage each minion is, and the each uh, minion stage status, and so on. And if they, if the whole group is has finished and the uh, uh, deadline has not reached, people can use a curl command to uh, stop the go routine or the workflow. Let's call it in that way, uh, which is uh, running. And people can also create, uh, so this is a, a template in an email template of this particular customer. They want to also run reports, uh, which is another sold runner module I created to generate a CSV output report. Uh, and also the database itself 
can be uh, queried by curl command or postman to see, OK, I want to see a particular minion which at which stage is it uh, right from the DB, so it is also possible. So yeah, like this one, so you can query. Uh, this is a HTTP get command. Uh, using postman and you just give the DB file and then say minion name equals Jupyter and then you will get a dump of the database. And this is uh, the inside of the database schema I use in job checker. Right, so if some system fail, and this is uh, something uh, <laughs> I think it's not bad, but uh, not perfect also. If some system fails, so if we patch a group of 500 systems, of course some system will fail because of, it can be anything. It can be dependency errors, mostly dependency error uh, or system get rebooted, but does not come back, okay? Um, so what do we do? So the idea is uh, if, if the system fail, the people will get this email notification. OK, so they see here, for example, one system Jupyter uh, at the stage SP migration run status failed. So the administrator will use SUSE Manager Web Interface to locate this system and try to get more detailed log output. What, what was the reason that failed? And if there is, for example, a dependency problem with the package install, they will go there and fix it, okay? After fixing it, um, the system has not migrated yet, right? Um, so then what they can do is I added a so-called uh, workflow rejoin feature. So I allow people to use the same configuration YAML file use this parameter minions to add and put the host name here, the, the minion name, okay, the minion ID. And then run this command, which is my salt runner module add minions and pass the YAML file and it will automatically read the input from here and say, okay, all these systems which are listed will be rejoined into the workflow. Okay, so they will run through the workflows from step one to last step again. Yeah, so this is kind of start over for some systems which have been failed during the workflow. Yeah. But the prerequisition is the main workflow. So for example, I just started a main workflow for my group test group. Yeah, and the main workflow has a deadline. So which means after three hours, the workflow is over. Um, and this uh, main workflow must be still running. So usually I in, recommend people to keep, keep a very long deadline, like three hours. And during these three hours for the one group with 500 systems, you can add, uh, constantly add more minions to it. If they have failed, you just, 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 just list the, uh, put the minion name here and run this command again. OK, and then they will be added again, added again. So start over function. Yeah, and the systems can be uh, each each minion or system is individual. Yeah, the one can be faster than the other one or slower. So yeah, so we cannot say there is one big job with 200 systems. No, each one has its own jobs. And hopefully at the end we have all all system turned to green, everyone is upgraded and so on. So that's the goal. So we already tested it at the customer side with uh, about uh, uh, 600 systems at once. Yeah, so they it so it worked. But still, as I said, the houses with I don't expect all the systems are the same, very homogene because uh, in my customer environment, the system should be the same, but it is not yeah, because a lot of systems have different packages, different difficulties. Uh, so yeah, so we have a, like, like in this customer side, uh, uh, I have about 500 systems and about 10% will just fail. OK, for different reasons, and those 10% is time consuming for the admins to 
to to to to to troubleshoot each single system and bring them back into the workflow and run it through. Yeah, but still, this helps them a lot because they there are two three guys here, um, and there is one maintenance day. Yeah, for 500 systems, and all 500 systems get service pack migrated, which is not that bad. OK, that's it. Um, so what's about the future and how to, what 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 are the points I see where I need improvement or my ideas at the moment? So continuous bug fixings for sure, maybe using Postgres SQL instead of SQLite, improve some logging. Um, my job checker is not. I, I would say I'm not on the fully wrong track uh, if SUSE manager is on Kubernetes to bring also job checker running into container and talking uh, uh, to the API endpoints uh, uh, in, of Saltmaster and uh, RPC XML. Uh, I will cons I'm, I'm still um, thinking about uh, when and how to use Go channels in my scenario in my, this is more programming issue uh, topic and uh, we still see a lot of uh, pro, um, minions from time to time saying uh, like package refresh minion is done reboot minion is done uh, blah blah minion is done but minion is not in reality done or yeah. and so I would uh, need I want to do more interactions with salt because I already have quite good experience in Go uh, link to interact with the Salt Tornado API. So I could do much more to do some recheck if the system is really up, or really done and so on. Yeah. And next week I also have a call with uh, the VMware team where I will get the access to the VMware API maybe and then I can do even more automations like, uh, hey, the system is really, we send it to reboot um, and it does not come back after 30 minutes. So we want to trigger a VMware uh, a VM reset. <laughs> okay, that's uh, future music. Okay, that's it. So that's uh, overall, um, the presentation can be made public. Um, and that's, uh, that is uh, my, my short introduction here. I just want to share. Uh, this is a tool I use. Uh, where is my? Da, 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 dum, 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 dum. So let's go there. Go to the workflow part a little bit big, larger, and in the middle, and larger. So again, this is some um, uh, the workflow. Yeah. So at the beginning, salt pre-checks some some stuff are there. Maintenance check, minion presence check using salt manage status, no patch, pre-state, and so on. Then it goes to the regular uh, predefined workflow steps inside of the YAML file. The, this can be customized, so people can can change the order or reduce the steps but they cannot change the names. The names are hard coded. So if if it if it is named like SP migration underscore run at the moment, it is hard coded. And then after that, there is a final uh, task called post migration. And in there we do some, we set, we change some uh, metadata attributes uh, because customer has some CMDB integrations and we do also the post uh, states. Yeah. So it's quite straightforward and easy going. OK, that's that's it um, for SUSE people internally. I will share this uh, graph and chart and so on. So like a kind of brainstorming. Um, I did some more stuff like what are why I did what uh, from a programming point of view, from a technical point of view and from a user point of view. So the workflow in itself, it's a little bit slow. Why? And I think the most important is this part. Yeah, so I really take care about gentle handling with RPC uh, API, so not to hammer it very uh, uh, too much that uh, because Michael uh, <laughs> told me many times, yeah, so I do a lot of sleeps, uh, uh, pause inside of the between the workflow steps uh, to really not to to stress the Suma uh, XML RPC and the, the performance is quite good. So especially the job checker performance is very good. Yeah, you don't need to care to think about how much CPU memory it consumes. Nothing. Yeah. Bob. 
Yep. Sorry to interrupt. We have some questions already, and there are more sessions afterwards. Uh, so if we can speed it a little bit up. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go back <laughs> okay, to the to the questions. Should I go to the, okay. to the questions or or what? I will I will do it. Uh, Cedric, you have something? Uh, yes. Um, there is one point that is um, annoying me a little bit here is that you are using port eight thousand to reach uh, no, out. No, no, no. That's just just an example. Gun. Just like an example. Yeah, but the salt API is. Um, you, you access the salt API ports, right? What uh, port tornado, is it? Tornado, 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 tornado API. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. with the uh, the future containers that we're um, yeah well that we already have for Uyuni, uh -huh. uh, we are not exposing salt API port yet. Uh, you are not exporting to okay. No. So it's inside the container. Okay. And how can I how can I how can I access the tornado API? Uh, that's a good point. Do we want to expose it <laughs> or not? How these cases should be handled and so on. Exposing this API means we need to check the security of it and secure connection. I mean, mm -hmm. and I have no clue what that what that means. Mm -hmm. Probably Pablo or Victor could uh, have an idea, but I don't. That's, good. That's a good, uh, good input, yeah. Mm -hmm. So currently, the salt API that we are exposing requires to use some authentication mechanism, right? And if right. I'm not wrong, this is uh, over HTTPS at the moment. But yes, uh, Cedric mentioned the new architecture. Uh, this is something that we need to decide if we really want to expose this or not to the outside. Yeah, um, but yeah. but but to be for me, it's not clear at the moment. My understanding is, uh, SUSE Manager Salt Master uh, is using by default for the SUSE Manager part the 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 Cherry Pie REST API on port eight thousand or nine Correct. nine thousand eighty, yes. and the one I use from Tornado is the one I just use, and I can configure it. So that's the, at the moment. Okay, and that is another thing is that we need to get uh, the Salt API configuration there. Uh, so that means it's a volume that can we can already configure and persist that thing, but then uh, it means we need to be able to export that expose that port. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what okay, I mean. Okay, guys. Uh, we have to move on because there are still two presentations left. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks thank a you. Lot. I'm done. Paul. Yeah. Uh, feel free. Feel free to reach us uh, if you have any further questions about this for the uh, people from outside. Uh, and yeah, Bo will be happy to follow up. So, without further ado, let's go to the next presentation, which is actually from Julio and myself. So, Julio, if you can share the slides. Yes, sure. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, we tested this before the session. I yeah, hope this is still slides. working. Okay, very good. Well, in that case, uh, for those that you are joining, for those of you that are joining the community hours for a long time already, you know that in SUSE we have this tradition of the hack week, meaning that the SUSE employees they have one week usually per year to well do crazy things in some cases. Maybe this is not a so crazy idea, but in my case, I usually team up with some other engineers and we start adding new supported distributions to Uyuni and of course then SUSE manager. And this year was not, a, not an exception. And for the second year, Raul and myself were working together on this. And uh, well, we have quite some success. So Raul, I think you can start presenting OpenOila. Yeah, so the first one I'm going to talk about is OpenOila. It's uh, an enterprise Linux uh, clone. Uh, I already talked about this uh, in, in previous hack weeks because this project started uh, much earlier. 
Uh, we made some changes to the salt bundle uh, in the last time uh, where we had some slot to work on this. So thanks a lot to Victor uh, for that, who is in the meeting as well. Uh, we send the documentation, which is just approved and waiting to be merged. Uh, and we need to clarify a little bit about the uh, SOL bundle, whether we are going to use uh, one uh, on its own, or we can actually reuse the one from Enterprise Linux 8, which seems to be the case. So in this way, we would need to maintain less code streams. And uh, it was already decided not to support Open Euler in, in SUSE Manager, so it will stay in, in Uni. And for what the concerns the community, uh, it's uh, not a big change. So next one, and this was something new, Raspberry Pi OS 12. So I was working on this, uh, and um, you have the link to the pull request there. And most of the stuff was uh, working very well uh, without uh, having to fight with the Sol bundle or anything. The repo sync uh, in the Unix server was working. The onboarding of uh, Raspberry Pi Minions was working. I was testing with a Raspberry Pi free. Uh, I tested this in both architectures, the one for 64 bits IRM and the old one for 32 bits. Uh, I tested with bootstrap script without uh, and also salt SSH, everything working. Package management, install, update, remove packages, everything was working successfully. We couldn't test any patching uh, actions uh, because there were no patches actually available. And anyway, this is not implemented for Debian. And this was pretty much uh, uh, recognized as a Debian system uh, everywhere. And the salt stays, formulas, remote commands, everything was working. Uh, I also had time to write the documentation, which is already uh, finished. It only needs uh, uh, a final checks and, and be merged. And uh, that was mostly everything that I did during the half week. And there are some uh, small bits that are not so important and which don't uh, make the product not being ready for production. Uh, which is the Java part for product identification and monitoring enablement, SUMA for enablement, and the test suite enablement. Um, but the rest is what is important and the product is usable. So that was my part for the half week. And okay, Julio. and in my, yeah. In my case, one of the operating systems that I tried to add to Uni was Amazon Linux 2023. You know that the Uni already supports Amazon Linux 2 for, I think, the last two years or something like that. In this case, while Amazon Linux 2 was based in CentOS, um, Amazon Linux 2023 is based in Fedora. But even so, it is still fully compatible with the salt bundle and all the client tools we use for enterprise Linux 9 meaning Rocky Linux 9, AMA Linux 9, etc., etc. It doesn't have upstreams or modules, so it can be managed directly by your uni. You don't really need to use content lifecycle management unless we really need, you really need it. It also has live patching for the kernel, uh, but we didn't test it. Should work, but it was not tested. All the usual smoke tests work at just fine, including the patching. So, well, you know, the list is basically the same Raul already mentioned, installing, removing packages, applying high states, formulas, running salt commands remotely, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a pull request for the code. There is a pull request for the doc documentation. And as I mentioned during the Raul's presentation about the next two version, both are match already, meaning that the next two universes will have support for this. Some things are still pending. Uh, the changes for Suma form, uh, by the way, it says wrong here that uh, they were not implemented for Amazon Linux 2. No, they are there. I was not aware. But for 2023, it's still pending. And of course, for the test suite as well. Here are a couple of screenshots. So as you can see, it's a little bit small, I know, but here basically you can see that the UNI is recognizing the patches that are relevant for the systems. And here you can see the systems that got onboarded for testing. 
I tested both architectures supported by Amazon Linux 2023, so x86-64 and ARM64, and they work equally well. So that was, in my case, the successful work I did for the Hack Week, but I tried something else as well, something a little bit more crazy in this case, which was trying to manage OpenSUSE MicroOS and OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with Uyuni. And in this case, it's not something complete, it's only kind of a proof of concept. For those of you that are not, not familiar, both uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and OpenSUSE MicroOS follow a rolling release model, model. And the basic difference between the two of them is that MicroOS is transactional meaning that among other things, if you want to install a new package that is going to generate a snapshot of the BTA RFS system, and you will need to reboot to get the package installed. But if there are any kind of problems, you can always easily roll back to the previous version of the packages. Microsoft, of course, is fully based on Tumbleweed and they are sharing the, as far as I'm aware of, exactly the same repositories and list of packages. The good thing is that since Victor already created the bundle for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, as you can see in this link, then I could already run some tests and improve the code a little bit. So basically, the onboarding via web UI, bootstrap script, as regular salt minion or salt SSH minions, that part is working. So you can add both OpenSUSE MicroS and Tumbleweed as clients to Uni. Running salt commands as regular minions and salt SSH minions is working as well. And installing, removing, updating packages works as well. I had a small problem in Tumbleweed. For some reason, the package refresh was not working correctly, but could be that I did some kind of mistake. Applying formulas was working only for Tumbleweed, not for micro OS, but I think that is related to some kind of problem we have with the transactional systems that we still need to fix. And I could not test patching well. No patches were available. <laughs> I should probably fix this slide because basically since both operating systems follow my rolling release model, then there are no patches. Basically, you have a new version of the package with all the fixes you need. Some things didn't work or are missing. The full list, you can check it following this link. But the biggest things for that list is that the repository pruning is missing in reposing. That's very important, by the way, because without this, the repositories in the unit server will keep growing, 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 and growing until they use all the disk space. So OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is cleaning up the repositories. We should basically sync what we have in the unit server against what the Tumbleweed repositories have at any moment. There were some small problems running the high state in micro OS because of some conflicting products. And of course, the problem I already mentioned about the package refresh, that could be my fault. Um, here it's missing, of course, of course, as well, your help. And in particular, if we're going to finally do this, help maintaining the salt bundle. With that, a word of advice, you can try this. The code is already merged, so you can call space, uh, space work common channels to add the channels and sync everything and try the onboarding. But you see that I have a lot of warnings here, warning signs, because this is not production ready. It's not even a tech preview. You must, and I repeat this, must not sync the repositories on a, on, on a uni production server, because otherwise, as I explained, you could uh, exhaust the disk, disk space, but you can use a new uni server that you have for development. But that's it, please try it because you, your feedback and your patches are very welcome and maybe we will eventually get this into a state more close to production. With that, we are increasing the number of operating systems that we have supported in uni and by extension on SUSE manager. So as you can see, this is the list we added in the last years. And now with the next to uni version, we will be adding Amazon Linux 2023, hopefully Raspberry Pi, Pi OS 12, that's to be seen otherwise in January, and same for OpenOLA 2023 LTS. And if time allows, then I think we can maybe take a couple of questions before going into the next presentation. Okay, any questions? 
It doesn't look like just a small reminder. This is a very good project for people who don't consider themselves developers. It is very easy to do this as a personal project. And now that we have new possible members of the open source community, this is a, a very nice project to start with. Uh, it's what I started with, for example. And um, OK, I want to steal more time from Ricardo, uh, who is the next uh, presenter. Uh, we are conscious of the time. So Ricardo, you can share your slides for your presentation. Yes, thank you, Raul. So let me just start sharing. I hope you guys can see my screen now. Yes. OK, so this presentation is about a um, quick project that was done uh, by myself and uh, Miguel Perez Colino, and it's about converting uh, Enterprise Linux to SUSE Liberty Linux. Um, does everybody know what SUSE Liberty Linux is on this call? Or do you have someone that know, don't know? But I can give a quick explanation. So it's basically a solution from SUSE side that provide, can provide uh, patches and, and packages to Enterprise Linux clones, for example, RHEL, CentOS, Rocky, and Alma Linux. So as I said, this is a great project from this year. You have the link in here, I will put it in the chat uh, at the end of the presentation. And um, how does the conversion work? Um, so basically, if you have an Enterprise Linux uh, clone and you are receiving the packages and patches, updates from the, the vendor of that operating system, you can convert it to the solution that is SUSE Liberty Linux, and you will have SUSE support, and all the packages will come from SUSE, built by SUSE, and they are uh, getting, we are getting them from uh, OpenL uh, project. <clears throat> what we have done was put SUSE Manager on this picture, basically. So we use SUSE Manager to cache all the, the packages to, to these updates, and we develop some automations to allow you easily uh, migrate from your vendor to the SUSE Liberty Linux offering. Uh, this is uh, the initial step. So we have this uh, link in here. It was the first repository that we just basically made um, an activation key and the configuration channel to apply some salt states for, to the migration. And in the next step was the improvement part. We create a formula with forms uh, where you can assign to a system or to a group or and even to assign the group to activation key. I will show this on the source manager server momentarily. <clears throat> and um, you can select if you want to reinstall all the available packages and basically have the packages with SUSE signature, or you can also keep the same packages that were before. Um, and basically it works out of the box with all the enterprise Linux versions. This is the tests that we are made. We test with uh, RHEL uh, 8 and 9. We are missing tests with RHEL 7. CentOS uh, 7, Oracle 7, Rocky 8, Alma 8, Oracle 8, CentOS 8, and then Rocky 9, Alma 9, and Oracle 9. So now it's demo time to show you guys how what we have done. So this is the link for the Hackly project. I will paste it this to the chat so you guys can have this reference. This is the formula, a formula with forms. Uh, that is also available, and you can have all the information in this link in here. And we are packaging this already in uh, OBS. We are packaging to um, lib15.5 to be able to work with uh, Uni, and sli15.4 that makes it work with uh, SUSE Manager 4.3, which is the base operating system for SUSE Manager 4.3. Um, I will present this on SUSE Manager because I didn't have the time to set up this on, on Uni and I had this uh, already set up, so it's much faster to, to do it. In here, I have all the channels synchronized, so the SUSE Liberty Linux 9, 7, and 8. Uh, the configuration that I have made in here, we have an activation key, uh, one with auto convert, one for 7, another one for Enterprise Linux 8, another one for Enterprise Linux 9. And in here, what I'm doing, for example, in the Enterprise Linux 7, is that I'm assigning the channels for um, Liberty Linux. In, in the version 7, they had a different name that was called um, Red Hat Extended Support, but now in version 9, it calls uh, SUSE Liberty Linux. And this is important. I check this checkbox, which will apply the high state as soon as I register the meaning to SUSE Manager. On top of this, in these activation keys, I assign one group. 
which is the liberatory dream style. And in this group, you see you have a new formula in here that is used liberate. It's called liberate um, formula. And I put a checkbox and I say, I want to convert, I want to restart all the packages on this system. So showing you guys, I don't have any CentOS or, or Oracle Linux installed, and I will try to bootstrap a machine and let's see what will happen. Oh, and by the way, first let me show you this. So um, on the top, it's, in a, it's a CentOS machine. You can see it is a CentOS 7 machine. The bottom, it's um, as is, it's a CentOS 8 machine. Okay, now I'll bootstrap it. 22. And I will select, since I'm migrating CentOS 7, I will select the activation key for Enterprise Linux 7 with auto convert. And I think should be enough. Okay, since this is done by activation keys, um, we can also create bootstrap scripts um, that use this activation key and um, to basically do the migration automatically. <clears throat> so as is bootstrapping, let me show you one thing. RPM, RPG. Uh, Ricardo, sorry to interrupt you, but can you make, uh, make the font on the terminal a bit bigger? Uh, yeah, sure. In the terminal? Yeah, Marina was mentioning if uh, in okay. the chat that it's a bit small. Uh, you see that Gilipsy, for example, is signed by CentOS. Okay. And I'm just increasing here. So it should be bootstrapping, it should be showing on the system. So you see the system in here. Um, install process is still unknown. And if you go to events history, it's already applying the high state. Okay. <coughs> Um, it's probably now installing um, some packages that are needed, and in a few moments it should be reinstalling everything. In the meantime, let also let also bootstrap the CentOS 8. Bootstrapping CentOS 8. And now I will select Enterprise Linux 8 with auto convert. Also bootstrapping this one. Okay, in the seven, we can see that it's still running. Still applying the hardware refresh and applying the high state. Can I can I just ask, is the high state which is currently running already reinstalling all the packages? It's already reinstalling all the packages. Oh, cool. And are you really reinstalling all packages or just yes. some packages? Uh, all that are available and uh, in this in the SUSE Liberty Linux repositories. We are okay. writing to this uh, log file. Um, and you can see the uh, execution in here. So it's basically running. So, but let me see if we can finish in time <laughs> in the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I can see from this command that the first steps already done. If we look at this. Let you see, RS release. It's already uh, SUSE Linux Hispanic support, yeah. but from 7.9. So it's already migrated, have the right channels assigned. Now it's a matter of just waiting for the install of the, the files. You see that they will install 290 oh, yeah. packages. Mm -hmm. 16 are not available. Uh, and now it's downloading the packages. But I, since I'm doing too much stuff on the server at the same time, it can take some, some time. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, this is all running in my local machine, so uh, that's it. So and this is CentOS 8. Uh, you see that CentOS 8 is already in here. Uh, and this CentOS 8, you see that's still unknown. And the history is also applying the high state. And then CentOS 7, I changed, changed the tab. Um, 
Ah, it's still unknown, but you have the right channels assigned. This will change the installed product from known to uh, Red Hat Experience support as soon as the state uh, finishes. Okay. Um, now this one, let me check if it's done. Yeah, this is also migrating to CentOS 8. So if I can, uh, let me see, OS release, you can see this is Lee expanding support with platform 8. And we can also tell in this case, um, it's a different file. You can find it in here. Dot log, and it's DNF Sli screen support migration. It's also downloading. Uh, now it's reinstalling the packages. And we can do the same for um, Oracle 9, for example, to have a different flavor, to, do, to have a different OS flavor in here. Oracle 9. Now we need to select extended uh, Liberty Linux 9. And let me just show you the OS in here. See, it's our Oracle Linux. So now bootstrap this one also. Um, and this one is almost done. The Simplice 7 was the first one. In the meantime, this is, this is installing. Uh, I would like to hear from you guys if you have any question, and then I can show you the, the result at least in one of them, I hope. So, any questions so far? No, it's good. Very good. Very good solution. Yeah. Okay. I see. Here you go. How um, do you? How do you? How just this uh, about uh, reinstalling all the packages? So you you mm -hmm. really uh, uh, find out what packages are there, and then you just query uh, yum uh, uh, install or something like this, right? Um, more or less. I can show you what we are doing in here in the library formula. <clears throat> we are what we are doing is basically, uh, for example, to uh, Enterprise Linux 9, we just call directly DNF reinstall everything except the virtual environment from salt because this package is installed by, by us. Ah, okay, DNF can do that, uh, but how do DNF you do can. with uh, uh, the uh, RPM or yum command? Uh, with yum, also have this yum um, and reinstall. Ah, okay, and reinstall. Okay, in this cool. case, we are ex excluding virtual environment and uh, the salt minion because at uh, CentOS 7, um, we still have support for salt, the traditional salt minion in here. Okay. Uh, so we are basically excluding the two of them because these ones are coming from our side uh, and we're mm -hmm. installing the bootstrap in the moment we bootstrapped the minion. So we, and you cannot just use the update the okay. execution environment at the same time that we are using it, otherwise it will fail. You know, so we are using, running this with salt, so we want to skip the update of salt and, and salt. Yeah, yeah, sure. And thank you, thank you. I didn't know reinstall this uh, subcommand uh, of yum. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, if you get back to here, we see CentOS 7 reinstalled. So everything in here, and you see that this is Linux Enterprise Server with expanded support. And you see the logs say that CentOS 7 is complete. And RPM and query info. Agility. I hope this one was reinstalled. <laughs> yeah, it was reinstalled. So it now the signature of the package is from SUSE and not from uh, CentOS anymore. Okay, Ricardo Miguel has something to comment on. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Ah, Miguel is Miguel Perez. Oh, hello, Miguel. We can't but hear you. Need you to unmute yeah. yourself. You are muted by the software. Yes, it's my signature move. Okay, <laughs> starting to talk on mute. Uh, okay, so um, the gem reinstall is reinstalls all the packages in the same version. Okay, so if you take a look at the at the system in Susan Manager, you will see that the upgrade has still pending, mm -hmm. unless yeah. you updated it. But I mean, yeah, normally is. Yeah, and you see that now this CentOS 7, it's an old machine that they have locally, and you see that here they have some critical patches to be applied. And these patches are coming from the SUSE channels. 
that was depicted on, on this one. Uh, the migration of Enterprise Linux 7, it's probably still running, but at least the initial release package is already installed. You can see this is the a cut from OS release. It's already migrated to SUSE Liberty Linux. Uh, and the NF is not running, so probably it's doing something else at the moment. Um, I will need to check. No, it's already. Uh, the CentOS 7 was even faster. So already migrated. Mm -hmm. Stuff that can be reinstalled are reinstalled. So let me check the events if I don't have any. No, all green. And it was much faster than I was expecting this Enterprise Linux 9 <laughs> because it's less packages, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see there are already some packages and critical updates available uh, in here. Just for the record, let me check CentOS 8. CentOS 8 is running in a different disk, so it's a little bit slower. So, yeah, it's still still running, but it will finish eventually. Yeah. Um, it's a fantastic solution, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would wish if we can make it uh, more like an atomic solution, like uh, so the customer has a bunch of systems they want to migrate and we can, they can just use it, uh, use use kind of like a bootstrap script or something uh, or, mm -hmm. or boot up a container that does everything. So bootstrap it into SUSE manager and start get repos and do the, uh, without uh, the need to play with formulas and so on. Um, yeah, this this was the solution for from um, Hackweek. From Hackweek, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, okay, we have a form with forms, and you cannot configure the way we configured. And if you just apply uh, this um, uh, this activation key, it will migrate automatically, and doesn't matter if it's a, a form with forms or if it's a state yeah. uh, out of the box. So it After is already a very good solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. After initial configuration, it's completely transparent from, for the users. It can be used since it's a, a notification key. It can be used from the bootstrap script. Mm -hmm. So it's fine to use that. And we also, I didn't mention that, but we also implement a feature. Imagine that if it's system centralized 7 that is not migrated yet, you can just go here. I'll change the channels, assign the formula directly to the system or to a group of systems, and apply high state mm -hmm. to systems, and they will migrate. Yeah. So it's works with the new onboarded systems or systems that are already resistor on source manager. So any more questions? I think we have eight seconds left. Thanks a lot, Ricardo and Miguel. Uh, it was actually Miguel also doing the project in a week. Yeah. Yes, Miguel. Yeah, I just one more thing. We tested it as far as we could. Okay, we tested it with RHEL 9, RHEL 8, uh, CentOS 7, uh, but the only thing we miss is RHEL 7, okay? <laughs> but the others, we, we tested as, as much as we could, uh, both registering, uh, uh, having a register system and applying the formula. So, um, you know, we know that quality engineering is important, so we tried to do our part here, and, uh, and we hope that this uh, works smoothly for, for customers. So, is I mean, we may find glitches, of course, but uh, yeah. When we think about it, if you want to convert 100 systems, you're going to want to have the repositories next to you. And uh, also, if any customer wants this, and only for the migration, but they do not want to a manager, please contact me, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, this could be studied too, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we want the customers to use SUSE manager whenever they convert afterwards, mm -hmm. but if they want to only use it for conversion, we could we could make an exception. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. thank you, Ricardo and Miguel. Glad to see the nice demo, everything working there. And I will go back to the slides of the community hours. In case it wants to work. Okay. Uh, yes, so that was the last presentation. Uh, is there any question regarding any of the presentations or any other question regarding the community hours for uni in general? Okay, I take it as a no. So uh, just a reminder, if anyone from the community wants to present anything 
feel free to uh, reach me. Uh, you have my email here. Uh, or uh, you can reach us in GitHub discussions, in Gitter. So we are very happy for uh, regarding uh, contributions from the community. And also a uh, reminder again that the next community hours will be on December the 22nd. So thanks everyone and wish you a very nice uh, weekend and see you the next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye all. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. 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 bye.